So, hello everyone. Welcome to the Speaking Podcast. My name is Marcel. I'm from Speaking, Asia's largest digital lab learning platform for professional growth through one-to-one coaching and group learning sessions. In today's episode, we have a distinguished leader from Singapore who will share their personal corporate journey, insights on leadership, and more. Introducing, the, introducing our guest today, Mr. Vikas Verma, Managing Director of Human Resource for United Overseas Bank. So a brief info about Mr. Vickers himself. Mr. Vickers drives a strategic HR human resource initiative to align with business goals, fostering a high-performance culture. With extensive experience across various industries, he excels in talent management, organizational development, employee engagement, and leadership development. Mr. Vickers himself spearheads effort to enhance employee experience, includes a proven track record in managing complex human resource transformation and aligning strategic strategies with business objectives. His advanced degree in human resource and business administration highlight his strategic foresight and commitment to the excellence in the human capital management. So I would like to welcome to uh, Mr. Vickers to the Speaking Podcast. So Mr. Vickers, here is uh, the question that we all would like to know. So can you tell us a bit about your career journey with some key milestone that you have shaped your personal, your professional path? Okay, first of all, thank you for having me here today. Uh, speaking of uh, my, my career path itself, uh, and what has shaped my career. So actually, I would perhaps start with by saying that I'm a mechanical engineer and I loved cars. So uh, sometimes I wonder how did I land up in HR? And uh, and there is actually a very uh, significant reason behind that. So as a mechanical engineer, I also loved cars. And I did start my career in uh, with machines. So I used to uh, work in manufacturing, uh, manufacturing soaps, paints, and, and other such things. And uh, <clears throat> what I realized was, uh, and, and probably I'll take a Formula One example, even if the same two cars, you can have the same cars from Ferrari or Mercedes, and they will never win, they will never close the lap in the same time. And the difference really was the driver and the team supporting the car. That really made the difference. So as an engineering career, I, I felt that maybe I really need to understand the human side of uh, productivity and what really drives uh, people to, to work. And, and I, I was in manufacturing for six years, but then I really pivoted and moved into the HR uh, side of things, of, so, so to speak, uh, to really understand uh, how businesses thrive uh, based on the people and culture. So that really shaped my career. I would say the second uh, big uh, part of my journey or career journey has been that when I decided to move to HR, I started with consulting, uh, with Aon Consulting, and I spent uh, more than a decade there. And I think that also shaped my career in a big way because uh, being in consulting, it allowed me to understand the people and culture issues from a diverse set of industries, from around the world, and that really uh, gave me a much broader perspective to understand the people and culture issues from a broad range of industries and geographies. Well, well thank, thank you, Mr. Vikas. So here we will like to proceed on to dive into your personal insight and leadership. So the first question I have for you is what are some of the most important lessons you have learned in your career? And as well as how do you continue to grow and evolve as a leader for someone with that much experience in the HR field? I think uh, maybe uh, there are, there's one word that stands out for me uh, in my own journey, and that is curiosity. I think all that I've learned is probably irrelevant if I'm not curious to know how I can apply those learnings and also continue to learn. So if you look at the, and the most recent one is generative AI, but it's not Gen AI now, it was a dot com in, in, the, in the early 2000s. And before that, there were there was telecommunication. So, so things will keep evolving. Uh, so for me, from a leadership perspective, from my own career, I think being curious and being humble is the most important aspect uh, <clears throat> that has shaped my career so far. 
and uh, uh, speaking of leadership style itself i do believe in uh, in really understanding the team i'm working with so what are the aspirations and fears or excitement that they bring to work and and how can i help them be successful in their own in, in their own careers so so that's the leadership uh, style that i really follow Yeah, let's move to the next one. So, Mr. Vikas, thank you for sharing so much in regards to your personal lessons as well as your evolution in terms of how you grow as a leader and your leadership style. I think it's plenty of takeaways for us to learn from it. So I'll proceed on to the second question that I would really like to know is that how do you see the role of HR evolving in the next five years, especially in the context of technological advancement as well as remote work? I think HR has uh, really played a critical role during the COVID-19, uh, which is, uh, and I'm not suggesting that COVID-19 like, like an event should happen again, but it what really taught, I think, to a lot of business leaders or the lesson for the business leaders and the community and the organizations at large was uh, that HR has to play a critical role if the organization has to navigate the disruptions that are going to come in the future. Uh, so in the COVID-19, if you see, most of the technologies for remote work were already there in place for, for many, many years. So why didn't we adopt remote work? Because there was no urgency. But the moment a disruption came, most of the organizations, I would say, by and large, adapted well to remote working. And HR played a very critical role in that. So I think point number one is that disruptions will continue to happen. And uh, the only thing that will change about disruption is the pace. It will happen at a faster pace, but will continue to happen. And, and if we do not have a very strong people function or the HR function, which is capable of dealing with disruptions, I think it will be very, very difficult for organizations uh, in the future. So I think the first role of HR the way I see this, they have to look inside and see that whether the HR function itself has the capabilities to, to partner with the organization to drive through disruptions. And that may require a very different set of capabilities within the HR function. The, the second, I would say, is that the, uh, as more AI is coming in or more technology is coming in, I think the, the man-machine interface is changing. Right. So far, uh, we as as humans will decide what the machines will do, but now the generative AI can can tell us uh, can, can do the work for us, right? And can perhaps even think for us. So in that context, uh, that there may be a huge impact not just to the organization but to the society as whole. So how do we as HR professionals help navigate this landscape? Uh, in whether it is reskilling, uh, reskilling really to ensure that there are no large scale redundancies, but also looking at uh, the organization itself, the way the organizations are structured today, the way we operate could change as well, right? So, for example, the entire call center industry could change, the way uh, consultants work that may change as well. And then there are so many roles that are going to change. So, so how will it impact the target operating model of the organizations? Uh, so HR's own ability to understand the organization design of the future, I think will be very critical. Uh, but, but if I have to really say this in one line, I would say HR just needs to really build the capability to drive uh, change through, uh, through periods of, of high disruption. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Vickers, for sharing your insight, especially this is a very hot topic in terms after COVID and how and the resurgence or the surgence of uh, generative AI itself and how it actually impacted work in the corporate setting. So thanks. For, thank you so much for your insight. So now I'd like to ask the last question for the day itself, right? 
So can you share a defining moment in your personal journey that significantly impacted your career path and leadership style? Uh, career path, actually, uh, maybe I've already shared uh, the defining moment was was uh, the whole experience of, or not experience, but observations of the, of the Formula One. But there is an experience there as well, because I did see uh, a very uh, one one of in one of my factories there was a team member. Uh, he was very curious and just wanted to solve problems, and he could come and uh, and and really create a huge impact to productivity just because he was curious and was willing to solve, solve problems and, and not just depend on how we how things were done in the past. So, so that, as I mentioned, really uh, made me interested on the human side of things. Uh, but I think the second uh, second example, and that's not about my career journey, it's more about my leadership style, is being a father of a teenager son. And, uh, and one, one lesson that I learned was preaching is not enough. Role, mo role modeling is what really matters. So as leaders uh, saying something, but when we are not in sight doing things that uh, we would not preach ourselves, I think it comes out uh, eventually. So, so the tougher role, I think, for a, for a leader is uh, go beyond preaching or only preach what we can we can practice ourselves so role modeling is really really important and i and that's the that's the one lesson that i keep reminding myself uh, don't get carried away by different theories and what other people say if i am not able to follow it uh, don't, don't talk about it well thank you so much mr because i do agree on your uh, I would say the insight of uh, preach what you can reach, yeah, and what you can teach as well. So I, I, I'm really, uh, it's really a big uh, eye opener for us here today, especially for me itself. And I would like to thank you so much for joining us today on our podcast itself. We really do appreciate the support you have given us. So once again, thank you so much, Mr. Vickers, for sharing your valuable insights and experiences with us today. It was a thank pleasure you. having you on the Speaking Podcast. To our listener. Thank you for tuning in. Stay connected with us for more inspiring conversation with Asia's top leaders. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us on our LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn page as well as uh, YouTube. Signing off. Until next time, this is Marcel.